the five major pieces to the life puzzle. We've covered three of them. Number one is philosophy. Number two is attitude. Number three is activity. Number four, I'm sure you're ahead of me, results. Results is the name of the game. The quest of life is to see, one, what we can become, two, what we can accomplish. What we can become and what we can accomplish. The key to life is to become skillful enough to do rewarding things with our life. Influence, productivity, activity, results, economic, social, personal, spiritual. But results is the name of the game. It's the reason for the seasons is in the fall to see what has come from the miracle of your hand and the seed and the soil and the seasons and the rain, the changes to cope with it all and to see what you can make out of what's available. One of the most interesting ancient stories said, a master had three servants and he gave them talents. Talents is simply value. Philosophy is to determine value. And once you understand that you have value, the key is to see what you can do with it. And here was the commission that the master gave his three servants. He gave one five talents, the other one two, and the third one one talent. And his commission was, see what you can do with these values. And that's what life is all about. See what you can do with your mind. See what you can do with your skills. See what you can do with your hands. See what you can do with your thinking, your possibilities, your capabilities. The key is to see what you can do with it all. Because results is the name of the game. And he said, I'll be gone for a while, and when I return, we'll go over the results. Here's all life expects us to do. Make measurable progress in reasonable time. Now, according to the story, the master evidently was gone reasonable time. We can't ask every five minutes, how are you doing now? Right? That's unreasonable. And we can't wait five years. That'd be too late. So that's what we call reasonable time to ask, how are you doing now? What progress have you made now in this long list of human values and experiences? So the master, having been gone, evidently reasonable time, came back, got the three servants together and asked one of life's most important questions. How did you do? In the time that was gone, what progress did you make? What results did you show? He asked this servant who had five talents what happened, and that servant said, I turned five into ten. Those numbers, I think, are very important, five and ten. Do you think they have any significance? I think in higher learning they have very much significance. Now, in average learning, it probably doesn't matter. But in higher learning, we say it's very important to understand the numbers. Key life question, should we be expected to double our values in reasonable time? Answer, of course. Shouldn't we be expected to make progress? How many years do you want your child to spend in fourth grade? <laughs> About one. You say, well, if they're nice kids, would you give them three or four years? You say, no, you can't give your child four years to get through fourth grade. That's too much time to make such small progress. Now, wouldn't it be important to ask those same questions all of our life? See, we build those first grade desks so small so they won't fit at age 21. <laughs> And shouldn't it be a reasonable question? What are you doing here? All this time has passed. So I think it's very important, according to the story, to go from five to ten in reasonable time. Now, the master said in response to these numbers, good job, well done. And to this servant, he said, what happened? That servant said, I turned two into four. Now, would you find that significant, turning two into four? I think it is. Key phrase, life is a numbers game. Part of life is a numbers game. How many books should you read to be adequately prepared to debate the major life issues in the next 10 years? Do you think it's important to come up with a, a pretty good reasonable number of books in a wide variety of subjects to be adequately prepared to debate the major life issues in the next 10 years? The answer is of course. Now, wouldn't it be important to know about what the number of those books are and what the wide range of major life topics are? This is very important stuff. This is not get by stuff now. Right? You can get a crust of bread and a pair of shoes and stay out of the rain and do okay. But this is called higher learning for success and leadership and influence. And skills that serve well for the future. 
So it's very important, numbers. How many pounds overweight should you be at age 50? <laughs> Approximately. About? None. Well, we may let you borrow one or two, but five and we say, hey. Ten and we say, hey, hey. Fifteen and we say, hold it. Twenty and we turn on the red lights and the sirens. Right. You can't go beyond twenty with any reasonable amount of safety for your health and your future. So numbers, numbers are very important. When a reasonable time has passed to say, let's go over the numbers one more time to make sure we're not off track. Everything by longevity tends to drift off track. So we have to keep coming back what we call mid-course corrections. If you're headed for the moon, the early guidance system when you first blast off doesn't serve for the whole trip. You got mid-course corrections. And they're very important when you're headed for the moon. Right. Because you can miss Kansas City and hit St. Louis and you're all right, but you can't miss the moon, right? So results being the name of the game, when reasonable time has passed, we have got to among reason-thinking people to check out your numbers, okay? And whatever these numbers may represent in skills or learning or capacity or equities of mind, five to ten, two to four. The master said to this servant, I gave you one talent, what happened? That servant said, I've still got the same talent. And the story said, the master lost his cool, <laughs> or something like that. We call that proper response to lack of results. We must show that the insidious is insidious. We must show how empty life can be without measurable progress. We must get right on the problems and the challenges, lest we yield too easy to the things that can leave our lives empty instead of full and leave us with pennies instead of fortune. We must have proper response to lack of results. Jesus said to his disciples one day, does that fig tree have any figs? Is that an important life question? Does the fig tree have any figs? That's such an important life question, if it's a fig tree. His disciples said, no, sir, that tree doesn't have any figs. The story said Jesus lost his cool. One of the few times he lost his cool. We call that proper response to lack of results. Shouldn't we pour it on? Lack of results? Shouldn't we make it clear? Shouldn't we become emotional? Shouldn't we become philosophically strong and find and select powerful words that will illustrate the point? Lack of results? Right? So, I guess the moral to the story is fig trees better have figs, especially when the maker of the fig tree comes by. <laughs> results is the name of the game. I'm teaching kids now how to be rich by age 40. If you live in America with banks and capital and, and money and churches and sermons and libraries and books and teaching and training and classes and rallies and inspiration, shouldn't you be rich by age 40? If you're not, isn't something wrong? The word isn't right. The word's wrong. Something's wrong. Now, there's nothing wrong with the country and there's nothing wrong with the community and there's nothing wrong with the library and the books and there's nothing wrong with the churches and the sermons and there's nothing wrong with the school and the teachers and there's nothing wrong with what's happening. And there's nothing wrong with you, but there's something wrong with your philosophy. Somebody sold you the wrong plan. Wow, it's easy to buy the wrong plan, buy the wrong philosophy, and make errors in judgment that compound into pennies instead of treasure. So one of the major reasons for looking at results is to see what might be wrong with activity. Maybe it's activity that's producing poor results. Now, a lot of people are working hard, but... They're not making much progress. Here's what we teach in leadership skills. Don't mistake movement for achievement. <laughs> Boy, it's easy to get faked out by being busy. The key is not just being busy. The key is doing what? It's easy to be busy and be making figure eights instead of much progress. So we look at results to see if there may be some difficulty with activity. 
Here's where we may need to go to work, activity. Because it takes activity to bring enterprise into being. There's a whole study here on activity. Activity is like birth pains. Disciplined activity is like birth pains. Now, I'm short on experience here, but... <laughs> I'm sure the mothers in the room would tell us, it ain't easy. But see, it wasn't meant to be easy. Values were meant to be costly. The only way we can appreciate a value is by its cost. If it doesn't cost much, we probably wouldn't call it valuable. True winning is a great worth. But the price is to play with all your heart and mind. And perhaps do some losing sometimes so that when you do win, boy, the worth and the value of the winning now becomes a high appreciation simply because now we understand both sides of this equation, price and promise. So we take a look at activity, and as we look at results, maybe something's wrong with attitude. Maybe it's how we feel. Maybe we've been nudged off course by influence into how we think about society and how we think about taxes and government and how we think about churches and sermons and people and schooling and learning and classes and worth and value and community and ideology. Our feelings about all that. Then if the results aren't there, one of the major places to look is philosophy. Where have I missed in the refinement of my thinking? Because my thinking has brought me here. Maybe I need some changes in my thoughts, my thinking, the books, the classes, the lessons, the studies, the decision making, errors in judgment. If I went back and corrected some errors in judgment, do you think that would affect the next three years? The answer is, of course. The new equity would be astounding. The new treasure would be exciting simply by making some corrections in philosophy. So we take a great deal of time to look at results to check errors here, errors here, and errors here. All right, here's number five, and I'm sure you've guessed already what number five is, lifestyle. Lifestyle is simply how you choose to live, how you design your life. It's key to understand, some people have learned to earn well, but they haven't learned to live well. The man studied economics, but he didn't study lifestyle. Or he's got the money now, but he doesn't have the joy. Here's what lifestyle is. Figuring ways to live uniquely. And it's a study, it's a practice, it's an art. It's as much of a skill as economics, learning to live well. Finding ways to bring joy, pleasure, excitement, appreciation, and awareness of how unique life can be. It's a study, it's a practice. It doesn't come by accident. Happiness is not an accident, it's an art. The lifestyle is not an amount. Culture is not an amount. Sophistication is not an account. Sophistication is a practice. It's an art. And anybody who wishes can engage in the art of sophistication.